All right, good morning, folks. This is a quick demonstration of how to set up your artwork and designs for making a button. All right, so the first thing you need to know, you've got to have Photoshop uh, as your software for these instructions. Uh, you want to make a new letter size document. So that's what this is. I'll go ahead and do it from scratch. We'll go File, New. And I'm just going to choose Letter. Doesn't matter to me if you go horizontally or vertically, um, but I am going to go ahead and call this button maker demo. Okay. So I'll leave everything else with the defaults and click create. So I now have a blank canvas. So the buttons that um, our button maker is set up to create are um, two and a quarter inches in diameter, but the artwork we put in them has to be two and three quarter inches. So we are going to bring in our artwork by going to file, place embedded, and then it can be any artwork that you have made. So let me see, I might want to do... Uh, da, 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 da. Well, there's some examples of buttons you can see right there. But this is a neat round artwork if I bring that in to design it as a button. I may shrink it down preemptively uh, right off the bat. This one happens to be round already, which is pretty convenient. But I'm going to go down to shape tool okay you may see the rectangle but if you click and hold on it you can get to the ellipse okay? and if I click in the center I can ask it to be 2.75 in for inches for the width and for the height and then when I click OK it's going to give me a circular shape now that circular shape is what we're going to use for the clipping mask now in Photoshop the artwork has to be above the shape that you want to use for the clipping mask. So I need to take my ellipse tool, move it underneath, and then I can right click and ask for create clipping mask. Now it says control alt G is the shortcut. I've had um, varying luck using that. For some reason it actually activates something in Google Chrome for me. Um, but uh, the next step in the instructions okay, is to group those together all right so I am going to click on both layers when holding shift so I'll shift and then shift and then if I hit this folder icon or press control G or right click and do a new group from layers it turns them into a group just call it button one all right so I can duplicate this group I can right click and convert it to a smart object which is convenient um, it will allow it to be moved around a little easier because you can have multiple um, copies of the button design that you make um, that's convenient in case you mess up when you're cutting it out from the printed paper alright so I'm gonna run that through another time I'll do place embedded okay and I'll just go to this self portrait here All right. I may shrink it down just a touch preemptively, but you can always free transform your artwork later. I'll go back to the shape tool, all right, and I'm going to click one time to create a 2.75 inch by 2.75 inch elliptical shape, which is a circle, all right, and I just have to make sure I rearrange the layer order. Shape under art then right click the art and do clipping mask. So let me try control alt G. Yeah, I keep getting some weird Google thing when that pops up, I don't know why. Um, so I'll just do it the long way, create clipping mask. All right, now the artwork, um, if I grab the move tool, the letter V, I can move the artwork around or resize it while the clipping mask is in place. The one thing you wanna make sure you do, don't make it so small that you end up seeing some of the original circle. You do want your artwork to be big enough to fill the circle at least on one side okay so then I'll shift click both of them control G to group it right click and convert to smart object I can press control D to make a duplicate copy or I'm sorry control J to make a duplicate copy all right so it looks like I have room for maybe two more button designs of this size so I'll bring in one other artwork place embedded Let's see, maybe I'll bring in a stippling portrait. Right. Now, you can decide when you do this that maybe you want to have the button 
focus on one area. So maybe I'll have a button centered on my eye. All right, I mistakenly forgot to put uh, inches on here, so I have to highlight the pixels. That would be a very small shape. We want to do IN for inches. Okay, now I drag that underneath, right click, create clipping mask. All right. So you can play around with the size, show more of the artwork, or you can focus on a specific area. But one thing to keep in mind is the outer quarter inch on either side ends up getting folded over on the button. So if I wanted to have both of my eyes prominent on this, I need to keep them a little closer to the center. Okay. I'll right click and what's another way to get these together? Well, I think I could do control E to merge it down, but it doesn't look like it wants to work. What if I do shift click control E? There we go. So that merged them into a single layer. The difference being, this is flat and not adjustable. I'll alt click and drag to make another copy. The ones that have this icon here, that's the smart object. So if I actually double click on the smart object, it'll open it in a new file, which would allow me to tinker around with like the placement. Okay, so if I decided I wanted to move it down or scale up the size, once I close this and hit save, it will actually update the newer version. So from here, we just do File Print. And then when the Print dialog window pops up, we gotta make sure the preview is showing our paper going in the same direction as our document. So this paper's going vertically, but our document's going horizontally. So I am going to click the horizontal button and wait for it to refresh. And then I'll scroll down the list here. All right, you want it to be scaled at 100%. Don't click Scale to Fit Media, because that will actually minutely change the size of your work and we don't want that um, because we want it to fit in the button press when we go over to it so I'll go ahead and send it to the high quality color printer and then we're ready to move on to step two cutting these out and using the actual button maker which is in a separate video all right have fun with this guys